Welcome to the first of our Cabinet of Chaos series, which thank you to the subscriber that came up with that name. It was brilliant. So if you've seen my unofficial kitchen tour video, you will know that that is referring to this cabinet over here behind me, um, which I showed you a sneak peek of it in that video. And you saw just how uh, disorganized, crammed, and just full of random stuff that that cabinet is. Um, lots of stuff that I either used once and didn't have any other use for it, or, you know, just some little baking supplies that you need, but just once in a blue moon. So we thought it'd be really fun to help me clean that cabinet out is we're going to have Mitch pick a random ingredient out of it that I have no control over. I do not know what he's going to pick. And in the next few days, I will look through some of my cookbooks and possibly online to see what can I do with this thing. And then I will make it and I will show it to you and tell you if it's worth making. So let's go ahead and start. Mitch, I'm not going to look and you get to pick. <laughs> I know it's bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorghum. Okay, so Mitch picked, and I haven't even opened this yet. Oh. So <laughs> as you can see, the only reason why I got this thing is because it was a buy one, get one free situation at my local Mennonite store. So we have Bob's Red Mill Sorghum. So yeah, great. I think that's a really good first choice, uh, especially given the fact that I've never used it before. So I will be doing some research to see if I can't find something really, really tasty to show you guys with this particular ingredient. So yeah, stay tuned and let's see what I picked out. <laughs> it's been a couple days. I could not find in any of my cookbooks anything for sorghum. So I ended up going online and I found a really interesting recipe from cookinglight.com, which I will link in the description box down below. So let me go ahead and show you what we're going to need and the first step that we're doing now. Now you will need mushrooms, um, pretty much any kind of mushroom that you prefer. These are the only two kinds I could find at Publix, so I went ahead and got those. We've got shallots. We're also going to need spring onions. Now these are ones that um, I just keep them prepared in the freezer and then just pull out what I need when I need it. And of course you'll need your sorghum. And so here's a little bit of the cheat. I could not find miso paste um, at my grocery stores. They were either out of it or could not get it. So you can substitute soy sauce for miso. I'm going to put a little bit of fish sauce in there um, just because I have it and, you know, it might kind of punch up the flavor a little bit more. But if you want to keep this vegetarian or vegan, eliminate this and then you've got coconut amino acids that you could use instead. And now over here, we've got our sorghum in a one to three ratio. That is one cup of sorghum to three cups of water. We're going to bring that to a boil and then turn it to a simmer. And that will simmer for one hour. So if you do this recipe, keep that in mind. Start one hour before you want to eat. <laughs> so we're going to leave that alone. And then we will come back in a little bit and prepare the rest of the ingredients that we're going to mix into the sorghum. It looks like we're almost there. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the mushrooms and the onions. So we'll go ahead and heat some oil in a pan. Once that's heated through, we'll go ahead and add our mushrooms. I got the pre-sliced, so I don't have any prep work to do. Um, that's just because they were on sale, so that's the ones I grabbed. All 
I hear our oil popping, so let's go ahead and add our shrimps. And once they start cooking down, you can add a little salt and pepper. But remember, if you use soy sauce, if you can't find the miso paste, be really, really careful how much salt you add. Because once you add that soy sauce, you can really over salt it. Our mushrooms are done. Let's go ahead. We're going to add some more oil and some butter to our pan. And as soon as it's sizzling, we can go ahead and add in our onion. We'll get these nice and soft and then we'll finish up this dish. And now while our onions are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and start on our shrimp. I'm going to keep it very simple because I'll probably end up adding the shrimp into the sorghum and mushroom dish anyway. So I'm just going to do like a simple butter garlic sauteed shrimp and I think it's going to taste really good together. Before I forget, let's go ahead and add in our little green onions. Now this said just to do the white scallions, but I also like the green in there, so I'm just going to add both. Now to this pan, we're going to add our garlic and some of these scallions. Now I like a lot of garlic, but of course you don't have to add that much if you don't want to. And the shrimp is pre-cooked, so all we need to do is heat them through. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper and call them done. As for this pan, our mushrooms are going to go back in. We'll give it a good stir. And then we will go ahead and add in our fish sauce and our soy sauce. And we have our shrimp almost done. I'm going to let these go a little bit longer. Uh, that'll give us enough time also to mix this with our sorghum. Now, at first I thought this was going to be too much for this. And I was going to save some of this for breakfast tomorrow. But you know what? I think it might be just the right amount. I say we just go for it. I'm so glad I just went for it because that really ended up being the perfect amount of mushrooms to sorghum. Our shrimp is done. Let's go ahead and plate this up and we're going to give it a try. Now, Mitch is at work, so it's just going to be me that gets to try this fresh off the stove. Uh, but don't worry, he will be able to try it later. Now, I've already made shrimp like this before, so I know it's going to be really good. Let's go straight for the sorghum. Okay, so... This, now I've never tried sorghum before, but it is really good. This particular way of making it is so savory and so full of umami. It is so wonderful and comforting. I love the smell of it, actually. The texture is kind of chewy, kind of nutty, um, unusual in that it's not really anything like I've ever tried before, like a pearl barley or anything like that but it's really good and something that I am definitely going to look up some more dishes for. Especially given the fact that I still have some in this bag, but I also have a second bag because it was buy one get one free. So 
I will probably be making this a couple of times and looking for some others, but I really hope you enjoyed our journey into the cabinet of chaos. I think Mitch picked a really good uh, first in the series ingredient, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to pull out of that cabinet next. So thank you for watching this episode. Really hope you tried this. It is so good. If you love comfort food, you're going to like this. And stay tuned for our next episode of Cabinet of Chaos. What will I make out of a mystery ingredient that Mitch pulls out of that cabinet that I have absolutely stuffed full of food? <laughs> so thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.